Hello, I'm Angelo Amboy and welcome to Capital Online TV News. Here's a look at the day's top stories. All nine students from Moy Girls School who died following the devastating dormitory inferno have all been positively identified following the completion of DNA examinations. Government pathologist Johansson Ador described the process as successful as the affected families flocked to Chiromomotri to view the bodies. Uh, we were involved in this incident, uh, doing a post-mortem and also making sure that we identify each and every girl who was involved in this incident because they were banned beyond recognition. All the nine uh, students were able to be identified through DNA and uh, we've uh, read them out. Right now, the, the relatives are being taken through the process of uh, looking, looking at their loved ones because it's part of also healing, after which uh, they are going to be given burial permit and uh, go bury the body. A student was arrested in connection with the incident and the juvenile court is set to hear the case on Wednesday after police were allowed to detain her for seven days so that investigations may take place. Some of the parents who spoke to Capital TV said they want speedy investigations to be conducted on the incident and action taken against those found culpable. Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko has promised to support all nine families and personally attend their burials. President Uhuru Kenyatta has warned leaders not to engage in hate speech and warned that the government will take strong action against anyone found spreading tribal animosity. The president, who spoke when he addressed a Jubilee Party parliamentary group meeting, said the party has no place for anyone who spreads hatred. The president told MPs from Jubilee and its affiliate parties to campaign on a platform of unity and development and should not allow themselves to be drawn into petty politics by their opponents. But we must recognize that it is not the individual that is important, it's the team. I said last time, and I wish to repeat again today, we shall be holding regular parliamentary group meetings. And in those parliamentary group meetings, honorable members, I want to give you my personal assurance that you will be free to raise whatever issue that is on your mind, even if it means disagreement with the leadership. Yeah? All right? You'll be completely free. Let us have vibrant internal democracy so that we can get the best. You know, because But within our parliamentary group, kila moja wenu ajue atakuwa na uhuru wa kusema ile iko ndani ya roho yake. But once we have concluded our parliamentary group, and once we have made a decision, honorable members, the only thing I shall request of you is that when we go out, we speak now with one voice. A meeting called by the Independent Electron Boundaries Commission with top leadership of Jubilee and the National Super Alliance on Tuesday failed to take off. NASA leaders led by presidential candidate Rilo Dinga arrived for talks at the anniversary towers at about 11 a.m., but walked out about an hour later after Jubilee failed to show up. Do we honored the invitation from the chair of the IABC where he wrote to our party, our coalition, saying that he would like to meet with the presidential candidate with one or two other or three people accompanying the presidential candidate. We arrived here at about 11.15, we have been in the IBC. Our presidential candidate, Honorable Raila Odinga, is here. His running mate, Honorable Kalonzo, is here. And we did not see the presidential candidate from Jubilee. Neither did we see the running mate. So we are of the view that the IBC was not quite ready for this meeting and they have given us a document that we are seeing for the first time. So our view is that a lot more needs to be done where all parties can be brought to the table to discuss the way forward in these elections. 
As soon as they left, Jubilee leaders led by DP William Ruto arrived at Anniversary Towers and held brief discussions with the commissioners before addressing journalists to explain why they showed up late. That meeting unfortunately was confirmed to us last night. We had already scheduled a parliamentary group meeting. And as you are aware, a parliamentary group meeting involves many members of parliament from all parts of the country. And uh, it was not easy for us to change the timing of the parliamentary group meeting. That's why we were slightly late. But uh, because our, our uh, competitors were here earlier, we have agreed with the IEBC that they will reschedule this meeting. In any case, it will give us time to look through the agenda items they have provided so that uh, in the course of the week, we can have an interactive session between uh, IEBC and um, uh, the competitors, us and our, and, 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 and our colleagues on the other side. Uh, we look forward to having that interactive session. It is, uh, we have made, however, very clear to IEBC that um, as a party we respect the independence of uh, IEBC. We expect them, as is provided for in the Constitution, to, pro uh, to run the elections independently of um, what the parties want. Former Machako Senator Johnson Mudama has been ordered to deposit a bond of 500,000 shillings to the court after denying hate speech charges. Mudama was also required to deposit a cash bail of 1 million shillings as proof that he will maintain good behavior, but his lawyers strongly objected, saying the charge he was facing was ridiculous. He was charged with remarks he made in Narok at the weekend to the effect that he was ready for a physical fight with President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto. Also charged is Gotondo South MP Moses Kuria, who was accused of making incitement remarks in Kiambu last week. They both deny the charges and are expected back in court for the mention of their cases in two weeks. The accused person may be released on a bond of Kenya shillings 500,000 with one shortage of a like sum. In the alternative, bail is Kenya shillings 300,000. And in addition, I'll call upon the accused person to enter upon his own recognizance in the sum of Kenya shillings 1 million for the understanding that he shall carry himself around in a good manner pending his trial and that if by any bad luck he should be arrested again for this type of offense, he should forfeit that sum to the state. The prosecution will provide the defense with all the documentary material they intend to use, including certified copy of the extract of the OB, and senior counsel has asked me for a hearing in January due to the impending election petitions, and I'll agree with him. So hearing will be on 23rd of January, 2018. And finally, an election observer group has urged the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission to open up its systems for audit ahead of next month's election. Kurayangu Sautiyangu says such an audit would be in the interest of the public confidence and transparency. Representatives of the lobby group, which comprises of civil societies, were speaking when they met to chart the way forward on measures the Electoral Commission should put in place to conduct a credible election, as explained here by AFRICOG's Executive Director, Gladwell Tieno. During the preparation for the fresh election, the IEBC must allow the participation of all political parties in the decisions made regarding technology, and representatives of political parties must be embedded in the technology discussions and decisions. That of course means that the political parties must step up to the plate and be prepared to do a professional uh, and thorough job. But the IABC must be inclusive and open and allow the participation of all political parties in decisions made regarding technology. And that's a wrap-up of the day's top stories. I'm Angela Wamboy. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.capitalfm.co.ke.